Well, welcome everybody to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee. Um, I've had apologies so far from Councillor Jason Jones and Jeremy Oates. Are there any other apologies? Apart from the bell, are there any other apologies? And can I just remind members that this meeting is being recorded and that everything you say will be taken down in evidence. <laughs> The minutes of the previous meeting um, held on the 21st of June are here for approval. Do I have a mover for those minutes to be accepted? Councillor Daniels, thank you. Thank you, yes. Councillor Claymore. And can we take a vote by show of hands to accept the minutes? Thank you very much. Item three is declarations of interest. Can I ask whether any member has any declarations of interest relevant to this meeting? None, thank you very much. Um, update from the chair is item four. Well, it's only three weeks since the last meeting, so there are no updates from me at this meeting. Responses to reports of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee. I'm not aware that we have any responses to our reports. Is anybody aware of anything different to that? No? Okay, getting through this fairly quickly, aren't we? Um, considerations of matters referred to Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee from Cabinet or Council. I am not aware of any new items that have been reported to this committee. Is anyone aware of anything different? No. Thank you very much. Moving on then to um, update on health-related matters considered by Staffordshire County Council. And I believe, Councillor Jay, that um, this is where you step up. Thank you very much. Uh, it's quite easy. There's been no uh, meeting since the last Health and Wellbeing Committee here, so there's no update since the last meeting. Um, I just want to, just for the record, mention the last meeting I was, I was absent. I know it was commented on, but um, Demo Services will be aware that I was only invited 24 hours before the meeting. I was missed off, uh, and that was too short notice to rearrange things, so apologies for that, but that was out of my hands. Thank you. Yeah, we had a, a comprehensive report um, from Dan at the last meeting anyway, so I think it was all fine. Um, the next item is the um, Armed Forces Covenant. And I believe um, that the Assistant Director of Partnerships, Joe Sands, I believe this is where you're going to introduce the item. Is that right? Um, the a report that councillors have got in front of them um, is referred to the um, cabinet report that is going on July the 21st to um, reaffirm the re-signing of the Armed Forces Covenant um, by Tamworth Borough Council um, with the Snaffordshire County Council um, executives and the district and borough um, leaders across Staffordshire. Um, it's the reaffirmation was in um, following the Armed Forces Act 2021, which put a duty on certain uh, public bodies in healthcare, education and, and housing to consider the Armed Forces Covenant um, to ensure that due regard to the principles are met around housing. Um, so the re-signing has reaffirmed that, that commitment of the Council as a result of which a three-year uh, two-year plan sorry has been put in place um, to um, actually for, for the council to actually look at and also um, the naming of an armed forces champion which is, is now councillor um, Andrew Cooper um, and myself as the lead officer um, the report sets out um, the, the armed forces, a copy of the armed forces covenant signed, Tamworth Borough Council's plan and the county council overarching um, plan. Uh, I now sit on the um, board with, um, with other officers across the county um, and the ask of the committee is to consider the reaffirmation, endorse commitment to the Staffordshire plan, 
considered the, camp, the, the Tamworthborough Council Armed Forces Covenant Work Plan, endorsed the recommendation to delegate um, a named Armed Forces Champion Councillor and myself to oversee the work plan and endorse the recommendation that a report on the progress will be considered on an annual basis to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee commenced in April, that should say 2024. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, as portfolio holder, Councillor Cooper, is there anything you want to add to that? Uh, thanks, Chair. No, this, is, uh, this is actually a, a great honour, to be honest. Uh, having served uh, uh, in the British Army, uh, between 2001 and 2008, where uh, I uh, had the uh, dubious honour of going out to Iraq for seven months um, with the Staffordshire Regiment, of, of which I was a, a member of for all, all that time. Um, I also saw uh, firsthand the results of what those kind of conflicts can do to people, um, including close friends, uh, one of which was from Tamworth, um, who, uh, you know, didn't make it back, shall I say. Um, so uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to be sat here uh, taking this honour as a, as a champion for armed forces uh, for, for, the, for, the, for the council. And um, I hope that I can uh, work my damnedest to, to, to ensure that the council uh, live by the covenant that we've signed up to. So thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Are there any questions from members? Councillor Dean. Thank you. Um, very comprehensive report, really pleased with it. I'm more than happy to, um, to say yes to it. The one question I would ask, I understand it's going to be coming back to health and wellbeing. I would like to see some examples of positive actions that are being taken. It's all right saying they're there, but I would like to, the evidence to know that there is some positive actions being taken. Uh, duly noted, and I agree with you. Uh, Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, first of all, to say um, I think Councillor Cooper is absolutely the right choice, uh, given his background for that position. I know both Councillor Cooper and Councillor Maycock, as former armed forces personnel, are very passionate about our armed services, so absolutely pleased with that appointment. Um, it's more of a statement, really, than a question, and look for a comment back from Mrs Mustafa. I, th I think one of the tragedies here, and it's a tragedy across society, is in 1981 we had 12,000 council houses. As right to buy has unfolded under several governments, we're down to what 4,100 last figure I heard. It'd be about right to know, wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. So obviously, you know, if you think you're turning over 70 a year, um, you know, as people pass on or move on or etc. So, you know, as council houses come back into the choice based letting scheme, it becomes incredibly difficult to house people. So, you know, when we say in these covenants, you know, we give our former armed forces personnel some, you know, extra weighting, it becomes incredibly difficult then to follow that through because we actually don't have the housing stock to give that weighting. And I've just wanted, it's not really a question, it's not really blaming anybody, it's just a point of, it's actually very difficult in that position to give anybody, whether it be a young single mom, somebody who's disabled or a former armed forces personnel, it just gets so incredibly difficult because we don't have the available housing. So it's great that we're doing this, it's just very difficult to deliver because of the constraints of what we've got. And like I say, it's more of a question, no, sorry, more of a comment than a question, but would welcome a reply if it's possible. Comment on that. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Um, so, in terms of the data around the armed forces, you'll know from the workshop last night we shared with you some of the profiles um, in terms of the numbers, and we know that um, households with one or more former veteran or member of the armed, force, armed forces makes up 7.3% of the households in Tamworth, so around two and a half thousand, something like that. Um, but actually, on our housing register. There's only seven applications from former armed forces personnel at the moment. So from our point of view, we do prioritise armed forces personnel in line with our allocations policy and code of guidance from the, the government. They are given ban one in terms of in terms of their priority and they are given support in line with the covenant. So what I would say to you is yes, housing supply is an issue, as it is nationally, um, but armed forces are recognised, are valued and are mm -hmm. intrinsically supported. And it is not an issue that the data supports for us at the moment in terms of our onward housing solutions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Clements. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
<clears throat> I think Councillor Cook forgot that I also served with the with the with the uh, armed forces as part of the Northern Ireland peacekeeping exercise in 1989 to 1993. Um, I held this role before Councillor Cooper for a year, um, working with Joe on how we set out this plan. And I'm really pleased that um, Councillor Cooper has, is now taking this on for, for, for somebody that understands and knows where we're coming from. From another angle, as the Royal British Legion Chairman here in Tamworth, when, as we all know, the war broke out in Ukraine, we had a lot of veterans coming to us um, with PTSD that were already suffering, but the stuff that was on the media, the stuff that we were seeing every day in the press, brought those to the front of their minds and really made them struggle. So I'm really pleased that it's a comprehensive report. I too would like, as Carol said, would like to see some actions as, as to where, some positive points as to where we have helped veterans within our community. And when it comes to homeless veterans, you know, extra weight, I'm pleased is given towards making sure that they get the support that they need because we're only too aware, um, working with them day in and day out, that they are out there but may not always come forward to help, for ask for that support. Thank you, Councillor Clements. I also served in Northern Ireland, but slightly before you. Okay, there are five. Do you, do you want to come in? Yep, come. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, th thank you for the, the work that went in uh, prior to uh, Andy taking on the role of uh, as member champion uh, and what uh, Councillor Clements did and uh, Joe leading up, up to this report coming to uh, committee. Um, for me, uh, when I left the forces in 2012, I really did struggle to get on to the housing register. And that was partly because the the priority was just changing over then. Um, but it's good to see that it that it's now written down and it's now being followed through and it's now being enforced. Uh, but again, take on uh, Councillor Cook's comments about uh, the housing stock. Um, just looking at the action plan, uh, me and myself. Next time it comes to the committee, would like to see what, what, what's actually happened. But something. Uh, so it was a Armed Forces Day last month, um, but there was no comms about Armed Forces Day from TBC. I just wondered why. I think um, with the pol I think there were um, some issues around the the fact that we the the information had not got through that we actually didn't put something out and I, I would agree that is an oversight so I would completely apologise for that and obviously we've now made sure that is now in the calendar for next year and we'll make sure the armed forces, the, the, the flag I think on the um, Marmion House should be the armed forces flag for that day so yes we'll make sure that is now in that plan. Uh, cheers Joe. Um, just interested to hear about the em employment recognition scheme that's in there and just how, how you get getting in, involved with that um we we have been approached by um the the um organization that recognizes the employment recognition scheme because the authority has signed up to a covenant um we are automatically awarded the bronze award um and therefore that's something that to encourage employers to actually sign up, not just ourselves and not just public bodies. Um, our um, HR team are aware of that, um, and we have got the contacts and the information. All our HR policies are compliant in the fact that we do have due regard to our reservists and ex-personnel. Um, so we will be looking to work with the team to see if there's anything further. Obviously, Staffordshire County Council are uh, silver recognised employers. Um, so we need to just, that's within the plan to actually see what else we can do to recognise that. Uh, just a bit further from that, are, are you approaching any of the resettlement, army resettlement teams that, that are basically with, with personnel leaving the forces? That, that is again through the information that you want to put through onto our website, linking across to all the resettlement teams and I'm sure we may not proactively approach them, but as long as they are aware of um, all the 
uh, commitments through the councils and Staffordshire to it. So you know we we, we will get we, they do approaches where there are veterans and personnel in 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 in, in, in that have issues. Um, I've had conversations in the past, you know, with with Staffordshire and with, with with British Legion and with with the um, yeah with the British Legion Royal British Legion. So yes. Sorry, I don't mean just just if they've got issues. I mean if if they're uh, like prospective employers, employees. Sorry, so so offering the, uh, any jobs that come out through TBC through the resettlement teams. That's something that we need to work on with with employers around in, in Tamworth, and again, that's on the action plan. So yeah. I mean T, TBC yeah. as an employee. Yeah. yeah, I mean yeah, it's something we need to look at. Yeah. yeah. Castle Cup. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, can I draw officers and members' attention to the Constitution, Rule 2.7.9, Member Champions? A champion cannot be a member of Cabinet. Um, however, I do, as I said earlier, believe Councillor Cooper is the right person. So can we send a request to the Leader of the Council that he writes it into Councillor Cooper's portfolio rather than make it a champion position? The role of a champion on this Council is to report to the Executive. So basically we're asking Councillor Cooper to report to himself. It, can we just get it clarified? Because I do think Councillor Cooper is the right person generally, so this is not me trying to stop the appointment. It'd just be better if the Leader of the Council wrote it into his portfolio and then the officer can get the support via that that is needed. It just needs clarifying, because under the Constitution at the moment it doesn't work. Thank you for that. Although if Councillor Cooper does report to himself, there will be a meeting of minds. Uh, yes. OK, we have five recommendations. Um, I do think we need to add in the point about coming back with practical examples of where this has developed. And I wonder if an amendment to the wording of perhaps recommendation four might might accomplish that and say report back on practical progress. That's exactly why they've um, chair. I've put in there that the, the scrutiny committee will be that um, that you know that, that the progress will be reported on an annual basis through to the health and wellbeing. That's precisely why. We've added that in so that you can have oversight of progress. We're more than happy to do that on an annual basis. If the committee want more, then I can, you can add that in. But certainly that's the, the reason that we've actually put in there, that we bring the plan back on an annual basis to, so that you can see progress. Does that meet what you were saying? I, I think my words were evidence. So progress would be of the whole thing, wouldn't it? I was specifically talking about bits of evidence. Sorry. So very practical examples, is that what we're saying? Councillor Cooper. Yeah, I'll, I'll ensure, uh, Carol, uh, sorry, Councillor Dean, um, that, um, yeah, we, we will bring back some uh, examples, clear examples of that, I think, where, where we've got them. I, I know what you, you, yeah, you're on about, so, um, and you're more than free to join my amazing meeting with myself, uh, so we can go for him as well. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but no, I'll, I'll, I'll ensure that those examples are met. Thank you. Okay, with that understanding, there are five recommendations set out. Is any, I pre propose to take them on block. Is anybody prepared to move? Councillor Clements, a second to Councillor Dean. Can I have a show of hands, all those in favour? Thank you very much. I think that's, uh, that's a really strong statement from Tamworth Borough Council, and I'm very pleased with it. Um, moving on. From that to, uh, and can I thank uh, Joe and and you, Councillor Cooper, for your for your input here today. Thank you very much. Item ten, homelessness hub. Um, is that you? Can I hand over to you, Tina? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, good evening, councillors, colleagues. Um, on behalf of the portfolio holder, so we've got a presentation we'd like to share with you. Um, tonight that's already been circulated in your pack so whilst you may not be able to follow on the screen at least it will sort of show you where we are in the in the flow of information I'd like to introduce Sarah Finnegan who's our head of homelessness and housing solutions um, <coughs> she'll be supporting tonight in terms of um, sharing with you some of that uh, detail so um, 
First slide, please. Thank you, Leanne. Um, so I think the first thing to say is that we have already had a scoping session with the chair. So thank you to Councillor Bain for that. Um, so the focus tonight will be on the homelessness hub and the decisions made by Cabinet on the 16th of March. We will be sharing with you some background assumptions and some data around that, just by way of context. But as you know, homelessness and rough sleeping is incredibly broad and complex area. So we are really trying to drill down tonight on the good news which is around that decision to uh, commission and provide a homelessness hub um, to support the prevention work we do in that area. Um, we'll, we'll just be linking some of the data back to vulnerability generally. Um, we'll just have a bit of a recap around our homelessness and rough sleeping strategy just so you know where it fits in that strategic context. We've then got a couple of slides on data that you will have seen in your pack. Um, Reflecting back, because this isn't our first rodeo, if you like, to health and wellbeing scrutiny. We've been here several times, and um, at the last scrutiny committee, Councillor Goodall, um, as was, had asked about whether the current strategy was working and whether the data supported that. So we will be sharing um, some of that update with you to show that, in our opinion, yes, it is. Um, and then I'll be handing over to Sarah, so she'll be describing what the Homelessness Hub is, what the intended outcomes and performance of that looks like and what the timetable for delivery is. Um, and then the view is that in line with the cabinet decisions, the delegation on the specification for procuring that service rests with our portfolio holder. So we want to make sure that your feedback, recommendations and input is reflected into that final service proposal. Uh, next slide please, Liam. So in terms of the sort of corporate vision then, so in, in linking this back to sort of living in Tamworth and infrastructure, the um, ensuring access to council services including housing and adequate supply of affordable housing goes to the heart of, of, of homelessness. I know that um, previously definitely councillor cook raised this last night in terms of whether homelessness is a problem so we've just taken the opportunity just to update some of this data to share this with you so it gives you that um, overview so we have roughly a thousand approaches a year from people who are presenting as homelessness preventing as homeless sorry that's up around five percent so it's fairly static over the last five years so we're not seeing massive increases in that and we close around 47 percent of those cases with on the basis of advice and assistance that's where we support people with onward um, independent housing options as opposed to triggering formal duties around prevention and relief um, so in, in terms of those uh, findings, I think what's fair to say is we were part of what was formerly the Ministry for Housing, Communities and Local Government, which is now the Department of Leveling Up and Communities and Housing. We were part of a task force um, by appointment because of our best practice around homelessness. Um, so the Homelessness Advisory Support Team recognised that we've got strong and robust robust approaches to this. Our uh, figures in bed and breakfast remain single figures or zero and they have done for the last uh, three years. Our rough sleeping count um, is, was two on the annual estimate last November. We do it every bonfire night, that's what reminds us. Um, and we are recognised as trying to use creative and innovative approaches to tackling homelessness, particularly in our use of, of our own stock. So we do have for a small district, I believe we punch above our weight and we have a range of housing solutions with some fantastic partners and supported housing providers and we make use of our own stock to try and maintain that good performance. But that's not to say, um, Councillor Dean, that we recognise that everything's all right. You know, there is still significant challenges and we have pressures from neighbouring authorities, you know, in particular Birmingham, um, we need to continue to work with partners and we need to invest in our um, third and voluntary sector and we need to monitor and continue to review that inward migration in terms of those external pressures, whether that's through Ukraine or etc. And the Homelessness Prevention Grant funding is a two-year settlement, so we work on the basis of a financial uncertainty. Um, so that shows you that it is contributing to the council's wider agenda around homelessness um, and if we can have the next slide please Leah. so in terms of the homelessness and rough sleeping strategy this was adopted 2020 
It was launched as part of the government's um, manifesto to end uh, rough sleeping by 2030. 2027, <laughs> thank you. And the overarching, overarching aims are to focus on uh, prevention and to reduce that recurring door uh, or revolving door sy syndrome. So our homelessness update in full was reported to Cabinet on the 16th of March and that uh, link is available to you. And just to say that we spend, our homelessness service costs us just over a million pounds a year. But over half of that, 555,000 a year, is met from a range of government grants, homelessness prevention grants, etc. Um, Recognising what I've just said around the two-year settlement. Um, so in terms of those funding streams, that supports homelessness prevention, housing solutions. It's going to sort of finance the proposed homelessness hub that we're talking about tonight. And it supports the reductions in costs we see from bed and breakfast Four years ago, we were spending 400,000 on bed and breakfast. We're now spending less than 100,000 because of the reductions in it. And we are using homelessness prevention grant funding to subsidise that cost, which means there is no cost to the general fund, which I'm sure those of you who have served on previous cabinet positions will know what a success that is. Um, and we do continue to benchmark value for money with other services. So that services costs less with some of our neighbours, and I won't mention him. Next slide, please, Leanne. So in terms of some of the data, as I've mentioned, Simon Goodall did ask at the last scrutiny committee in February if the strategy was making a difference. Well, over the next couple of slides, I just want to show you that, in our opinion, it is, but there is more to do. Um, so the first thing to say, this is the homelessness case level information collection system. Apologies, it's the government terminology, not ours. But we're required to submit this on a monthly basis. And it shows that, you know, not only do we submit it accurately, and they verify this independently, but it shows that our figures um, are in the in the right direction for having low figures in bed and breakfast and we've got now 16 or 17 year olds in bed and breakfast accommodation neither have we got any families in temporary accommodation for more than the 42 statutory days um, again we benchmark that with 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 neighboring authorities and that's not the same um, so when you compare that with the 2018 figures they are significantly less which shows an improvement this also shows that just over 90 one percent of our clients secure onward accommodation um, so we're able to sustain them into settled accommodation for six months or more um, you know which recognizes the success of the intervention next slide please Leanne so then the reasons for approaching Tamworth what these two tables show over the last uh, five years 2018 pre-strategy right up to the current moment is that the main reasons for approaches are the same so family members asking clients to leave ending of the private tenancy relationship breakdown domestic violence they're the same top four or five reasons as they were profiled five years ago but what you can see is the figures have significantly dropped so if we take one of the biggest ones family asking clients to leave has dropped from 138 individuals in 2018 to 75 uh, in the last current period. So what we're seeing is that those numbers are responding to the interventions we put in place. We've got officers who are trained family mediators. We work with private sector landlords. Joe's got a very dynamic and excellent private sector offer, which means we can work through deposit schemes. And we do prioritise people if they enter and engage in mediation with us. And those figures show that. Next slide, please, Leah. The support needs follows a similar principle in that the in that those reasons for support are also the same sort of profile over the last five years. So people with a history of mental health, people suffering ill health or disability, or people at risk of domestic violence, that profile is the same. But again, you can see through the interventions we've had, numbers have fallen significantly. So those people with histories of mental health, we've seen for... On, from a support point of view, from 108 households to 34, ill health from 57 to 9, etc. Now, again, that's because the housing homelessness strategic interventions are working. Um, in terms of sort of the mental health, the partnership working we've got with 
MPFT, who we've talked about, or you know, on other seminars, Better Way, um, Humankind, all provide that holistic support to help people navigate different care and complex uh, care pathways. We also have used some of our homelessness prevention grant funding to introduce neighbourhood coaching. We've had mental health nurses as part of our severe weather emergency protocol, and we're very proud. For those of you who were at Scrutiny in November last year, Terry joined us to co-present from the heart of Tamworth on the excellent offer we have with partners up there in terms of providing that wraparound holistic support. And that is really starting to show uh, in some of their figures. Now, yes. Um, obviously, 2020, there was quite a huge jump in a lot of those categories on support needs. That was... I'm guessing because we were all in COVID and people were, more people were at home. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Councillor Clements. You're absolutely spot, in, spot on. You'll remember during COVID, we, have, we had the Everyone In initiative, which meant everybody had to be off the street. So what we saw was everybody being placed into, you know, temporary accommodation or being given some additional support. So it distorted those figures. So you're absolutely right. Thank you for that. Um, next, a final slide from me and then I'll end over to uh, Sarah. So in terms of the story so far, we just wanted to recognise and thank you as the committee for being on the journey with us because we think it's been really invaluable as we've, we've been to the um, 29th of November health and wellbeing scrutiny. We came again in February. That was supported by pre-meetings with the then chair and vice chair, Councillor Jay and Councillor Cook. And all of that fed into the cabinet recommendations on the 16th of March. Um, so those decisions that were made at cabinet were to support the progress across that strategy. So you can have a look at that action plan uh, if you're bored. Um, it was to continue that severe weather emergency protocol and that winter relief with our partners, Half Tamworth. But importantly, it was to approve the development of that homelessness hub, as I've said earlier, as well as approving a new and refreshed temporary accommodation policy. So Sarah's just going to spend a few minutes talking about the homelessness hub, and then we're happy for the portfolio holder and the chair to sum up. Thank you. Thanks, Tina. Um, Next slide, please. Thank you. So the slide, this slide focuses on the key housing and homelessness strategic priorities that support the Homeless Hub. Um, we just wanted to show the golden thread, really. So as you can see, um, it is a bit small on there, but priority one is linked to drop-in services, advice and support for households. Through priority two of the strategy, um, we aim to develop pathways for rough sleepers and expand on what we already do. The focus will be on to help and assist rough sleepers, vulnerable households to access accommodation and support is fundamental. Um, other outcomes, as you can see, are improving health and wellbeing aspirations and expanding on the work that we already do with the third sector, voluntary sector. Um, we also want to support those vulnerable households on digital inclusion as to directly access the use of e-forms um, and the portal. Sorry. Um, and our evidence base shows that homeless households um, have a diverse range of support needs as well as accommodation. Um, we therefore want to work with partners in, for the hub in putting together a hybrid package of support to help households better access that move on accommodation. Um, this will be supported by the hub and will link to tenancy ready schemes and winter relief project, projects that we've already got in operation, which Tina's just mentioned. Next slide, please. Thanks. So I'll only go through a few of these. Um, proposed for the specification at the moment will be five service outcomes that we've put together and would like to see achieved for the users of the hub. First one is that for people and families homeless or threatened with homelessness to be able to access increased face-to-face -face contact with weekly outreach surgeries, um, family drop-ins, advocacy support and meetings with case officers. Outcome two is around maintaining and assisting with financial well-being for singles and families. The outputs on there are assistance such as rent payment issues, affordability, DHP applications or support with utilities. Um, outcome three would want users to have support in improving mental and physical health and links to housing. 
and the outputs as it states on there would be referrals to humankind, drug and alcohol services, access to GPs or even registering with GPs, food bank and better way recovery and improve the emotional and well-being so you know the service users needs. Outcome four would be for service users to have increased learning and improvements in life skills and employment training and opportunities and some of the outputs for that would be employ employability sessions, employability sessions, links to apprenticeships and opportunities such as life skills and volunteering. And lastly outcome five um, we'd like to achieve for the service users to have an increased level of positive social interactions and reduced levels of isolation and the outputs for that would be referrals to community organisations and trying to reduce um, social isolation for that cohort. Just to say this isn't to encourage people to Tamworth for support, um, it is to support those in Tamworth who may have accessed the service or need it and we will direct um, anyone from outside the area if they need to be to wherever they need to go. Um, we are following a blueprint of many local authorities taking a proactive approach to early interventions. Um, the hub we want to see, we definitely want to focus on more of the face-to-face -face aspect with clients, supporting with forms, um, interconnected services and Tamworth already has a robust multi-agency approach via TVP but we want to carry on that good work um, and have a community focused response. So I'll come on to a little bit of the specification on the next one, but we want to invite collaborative bids. That's what we'll be saying in the specification. Um, although it's not a requirement, but we would like it. So if there's partners in Tamworth that want to join forces to deliver the project for us, that would be uh, good. And the vision for us would be that there's a multitude of venues, um, which is a bit of an aspiration, but it would be nice to have. Next slide, please. So this is just to give you a bit of a taster of performance monitoring. I won't read all of these. There's just a few samples of the output indicators and more importantly, the outcome indicators the, out the council will be looking at to monitor for the organisation who is successful in running the hub so we can track the progress, feedback to senior management and of course members um, and scrutinies. Um, just a couple of examples on there would be, you know, number of individuals and families supported and onward referrals and the outcomes would be sort of how many singles and families have an increased knowledge of housing options available to them, how many tenancies are sustained or how many have had mediation, benefit advice and the number of people and families gaining employment and training pl placements. Next slide, please. Thank you. So the next slide is the what's next. Um, this is the proposed timeline for the specification and the contract to be awarded, taking into account scrutiny feedback tonight, which we fully welcome for this session. Um, and then we hope to publish on intend this week um, and for the service commencement to be around the 18th of September. I don't know why it's in the middle of the month, but it is. Um, next slide, please. So thank you for listening. Um, I'll hand back over to the chair for your feedback and to open up any questions. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, you. Interesting. Can you turn your mic off? Yes. Thank you. Any any questions on that presentation? Councillor Cook. Again, I think more of a comment than a question, but obviously welcome feedback from officer or portfolio holder. Obviously, firstly, starting with obviously the government pledge, you know, no more rough sleeping after 2027, if I remember rightly. Yeah. I mean, I just wonder how does that take into account? We've had this issue historically in Tamworth. For those that actually choose to live that way, because that's removing somebody's freedom, isn't it? We, we, we've had people sleep in middle end historically when the council approached them. They actually want to live with that freedom. So that would be a point that, I'd, you know, I'd start with. But I mean, I think we've long understood that actually rough sleeping is not a major problem in Tamworth. Sofa surfing has always been a major problem in Tamworth and you know we've all come across families where teenage boys are sleeping on grandparents sofas because there's no more room in mum and dad's house. That's the historic issue with that so well, when people think of homelessness we can't just sit here and think rough sleepers we've got to think there's an entire dynamic of what homeless can mean. So I mean I'm, I'm aware for a lot of years Tamworth had a begging problem but not so much a homeless problem. But it's the homelessness that you can't see, I think, is where the real challenge is for us going forward. So, you know, that would be my feedback. That's where we need to concentrate a lot of effort 
now. I mean, I know we spend as a council a small fortune on homelessness because we've historically driven the council to do so because historically it was an issue. As Tina rightly said, and I pointed out the seminar last night, we were one of six councils in the country put on the government task force because we were in the top six councils in the country dealing with the problem, but we were throwing a small fortune at it money-wise. And obviously, if that money begins to decline, the problem may rear, so it's something we've got to keep our eye on. Just a comment from me, Mr Chairman, but I welcome any feedback. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Any other questions? Councillor Dean. Thank you. It's just a bit of clarification on page eight. I don't know which slide that was. One of the um, bits in the box is left institution with no accommodation. I just wondered what the institutions, what this covered. Um, it's either prisons or um, mental health units. Um, thank you, Councillor Cook, for your comments around um, rough sleeping. Absolutely concur with what you've said. I mean, you know, I suppose it's a complex area, and as you know, the government's aspiration is to end that by 2027. It's also defined in very complex terms. So, you know, it's what's referred to as entrenched. So those people who who almost choose to. Um, rough sleep as opposed to transient as opposed to people who are moving through so those numbers that we we have on the annual rough sleeping count which is currently two are transient those are people and interestingly the two we identified last november were picked up and accommodated within days because they are transient and they are looking for that support we don't have an entrenched issue but you're absolutely right what the evidence base and the strategy identified was that we do have or have had issues with begging, which presents itself as, as homelessness. So together with our community safety partnership hat on, we are looking at different incentives to try and, you know, you've seen probably other authorities have looked at crowdfunding and charitable donations rather than giving people on the street money and things like that. So we are looking at those kind of schemes going forward as part of the strategy. Um, but it's aspirational, I think, um, and we're working towards that. Councillor Daniels. Thank you, Chair. Um, linking, um, Councillor, sorry, Ms. Mustafa, to what you mentioned about other authorities, um, aspirationally, with this project, how would you like to see us work with other authorities? And we mentioned the idea of the support for people, but with the right places. I mean, that is a challenging question. Um, in, uh, thank you, Chair. That's a challenging question in terms of, you know, which authorities we're talking about and the extent to which we can work together. For example, um, some of the issues we're seeing in terms of the cross-border work in his placements from Birmingham, for instance, on our boundary, that's putting pressure on some of our service offers. We're trying to establish through the homelessness advisory support team that we work um, collaborative relationships to do that but I think it's probably fair to say not everybody is in the same position as we are and therefore you know all, as I say we often punch above our weight and you know it amazes us day to day as a small district how we can accommodate and support people when some of the bigger authorities can't so their appetite for working with us is varied shall we say but we are continually pushing that door whereas some of our local partners within the county, for example, are much more keen to do that. And we do have um, both county-wide and district-wide partnerships, and Sarah sits with her peers, if you like, in terms of sharing best practice and supporting that. And certainly, not currently, but recently, there's been discussions around whether we can support them with their onward processes and training given that we're recognised as being best practice in some of our areas so if your question is do we think that's important yes we do if it's about how we do that we're trying but it's a variable response depending on people's own pressures councillor dean and then i'll bring councillor cook then councillor Taylor. thank you um, i'm not sure if this is something you can answer but it's just something that jumps out at me one of your boxes on that same thing is eviction from supported housing which i presuming would be vulnerable people i'm just wondering what we do with people if we've been evicted them from somewhere like that what are our options 
inevitably that happens because you know yeah despite the fact that we put that support in and often with partners i mean some of our supported housing like um Corn, yeah. you know cornerstone etc you know provide very expert and robust wraparound support but people simply don't engage with that and we have to accept that despite those interventions and that could be an outcome i mean what we try to do is ensure that's a last resort we try to work with that individual through a variety of partners and the ones who are hosting that individual or household to try and explain what the consequence of that decision is. Because part of our onward homelessness assessment, you know, and there's all sorts of tests, but one of those is whether you are intentionally homeless or not. So what we do say to those individuals is if, you know, you are judged to have made yourself intentionally homeless, then we have no onward statutory obligation towards you. Of course, the dilemma for us is those individuals are still in our communities impacting on our services. Um, so then it becomes one of sanction rather than support. But yes, that happens. But you can, you know, all we would say is we've done everything possible to try and mitigate that. Thank you for that. If I might, Chair, it, it, it looks a small number, but, you know, when you're talking about those individuals, it's a lot of people who... Are just out there really so that's that's quite shocking uh, yes of course as part of their personal housing plan we give them viable options so depending on their age they might be entitled to um, an under 35 rate for lha rates local housing allowance or one bed rates care leavers get the, the lifted one, the, the higher rate, should I say. Um, we also work with partners in Burton, um, in Derby, with YMCAs, with other supported services in Burton. There might be some further afield. People don't like leaving Tamworth, we understand that, so we try and find them something where they need near to be, but they also have a responsibility for themselves to work with us to explore all options. But it can be difficult. We had one today. So, you know, it is, yeah, it is something that is, we just work with them and hopefully could find the best outcome for them. Yeah, thanks. Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, one of my personal annoyances for many, 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 many years, and I wouldn't stop the council doing what we've historically done, but it does drive me absolutely mental. I just wonder if it still is the case and if Mrs Mustafa could confirm either way. Historically, another council quite close to us that I won't name, just there, um, doesn't run an outer hours phone service. Whereas we know in Tamworth, you ring 709, 709, option one overnight. Instant, the biggest thing the council pushes out of ours is, are you homeless, do you need us? And an officer is available. What we were discovering for many, many years is councils around us that didn't run that service. People were picking up, if you ring Tamworth, Tamworth will deal with you. And for years we were dealing with residents of other council areas because we paid for an outer house gone service. My question is, is that still the case? And is that something that we should be attacking now and shaming other authorities that are not providing that service and we're having to pick up their caseload? So I'd just like an update on where that is. Yeah, if we can use the word persuading instead of shaming, that would be helpful. So, in answer to Councillor Cook's question, we do continue to offer a 24-7, 365 day a year out of our service. That's part of our statutory responsibility, as is indeed it is all other authorities. Um, but because that's delivered by our in-house team on a router basis, and we are looking at options around how we can deliver this differently, because of the pressures on our own um, uh, team members, um, but because it is done in-house at the moment, we are very robust in challenging that. So if we do get the police or other clients ring us who are not resident in Tamworth, we do refer them back to their host authority. Um, and we get very few as a result. We keep a record of all our out of hours activity for further inquiry. And I'd say it's negligible. It's less than 1% of our overall calls. Um, but what we are seeing is that other neighbours around us are entering into um, outsourcing arrangements um, where they've got call centre activity and we are currently looking at the benefits of that and whether we would want to do that. We have to balance that by there being a risk that then you know, we end up placing people who may not need that. So it, it's some way off yet but, and as we've got those proposals we'll bring them back to committee and cabinet. Um, but it's not an issue for us. 
Thank you, Councillor Cook. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Chair. Forgive me if you have actually covered this, but um, page four, priority three, improving supply of, of and access to affordable and supported housing. Um, how do you, how could somebody tell me how that is going to, what sort of form that's going to take? Um, so obviously that links it back to that overarching sort of, vision, you know, sort of strategic ambition in the council's um, corporate plan. Part of our homelessness and rough sleeping strategy identifies um, the need for new and affordable housing as part of that, and we that manifests itself in a number of ways. One, it's around providing different housing supported solutions with other providers, as Sarah's mentioned earlier, such as Burton, etc. It's looking at how we use our existing stock to increase different housing options um, in the council's own sort of tenure. It looks at how we target some of our investment priorities around acquisitions and um, you know the purchase of of additional stock to increase supply overall but within a cost envelope i wouldn't want to mislead you in terms of managing expectations you know going back to councillor cook's very first point there is an issue with supply and we all recognize that nationally but we do within our cost envelope and our current resources do try to use our um you know our collective resources to increase that so that's that's included as part of the strategy in terms of generating those other options okay i'll bring in councillor maycock and then i'll ask the portfolio holder to sum up with what they've heard uh thank you chair uh th thank you for that report as well um i just want to congratulate you on on, on one of the pathways because uh, i was working with a, a family of couple of weeks ago uh, that was becoming homeless and within a couple of hours got them into a place. So I've got, I've, got, I've got to say that that's absolutely brilliant. Although I was a bit concerned when I first phoned the number because it went straight to answer phone. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, 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 but <laughs> yeah. rest assured, I did get a call back quite, quite uh, sharpish. Um, ju just looking at the temporary accommodation, I mean, I, mean, I know that, 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 that these figures are, are going the right way um, but just maybe that the properties could have a lick of paint uh, maybe just be a bit more inviting because there are these sorts of people are obviously going to be going through stressful situations and has been that's been identified they're probably classed as vulnerable so ju just that bit of care and attention in the properties might, might, might benefit them uh, I know it, it, it's still a roof over their head, but ju just just that little little bit of extra extra attention. Thank you for that, and thank you for support on that particular case because we remember it well. I think two points there. One is in terms of that out of hours response, the seven oh nine seven oh nine number is answered. If that person is or on another call, then it will go to an answer machine. What we've identified is that because during COVID staff members ended up having their own mobiles there isn't a preset message on there but we are looking to to resolve that over the course of the um you know the next few weeks etc but it is answered and i think that's what you were saying in terms of the standard of properties you're obviously referring to where people move into the council's own stock because if they're moving to the private sector then obviously that's governed by whatever that private landlord's lettable standard is if you're talking about the lettable standard within our own stock, then we'll take that back. And obviously, Paul Western, who's a colleague looking after asset management, is responsible for that. So we'll make sure we feed that. Yeah, Great, thank you. Thank you. Can I ask the portfolio holder to sum up, please? Yeah, <laughs> thank you um, for both of you for uh, going through that report. Much appreciated. Hopefully it was helpful to members and thank you very much for all your feedback. Uh, just wanted to say, uh, just to add to that, uh, I think it's really important here that we ensure that we're keeping on top of the prevent mechanisms um, because at the end of the day, if we can home in on that, we can reduce um, a lot of these circumstances from happening. I'm particularly interested in the mental health and the expansion at the uh, Tamworth Advice Centre. 
I think that's really, really important. Um, we also want to make sure, uh, alluding to what Councillor Cook mentioned about uh, budgets, you know, we don't want to see any reduction in those. We want to make sure that uh, this is well funded and um, we're making sure that uh, uh, certainly existing structures and any uh, additional structures are, are kept in place. So that is very, very important. And, um, you know, this is, as we've kind of highlighted recently, a lot of this is very evolving. And, um, you know, there's certain things that are happening at the moment with refugees, which is a very important uh, subject matter. And there's also, you know, with, with regulations that are coming through with the housing and levelling up, you know, all of these have either direct or indirect uh, levels of uh, impact. So it is important we do keep on top of this. But thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um, now, there are no recommendations currently um, attached to this report. Are there any members who would wish to make any recommendations, or are we content to approve the report as it stands? Are we content to approve? Thank you very much. We will move on to item 11. Can I thank you for, thank you. I thought, what was a really an interesting session, a lively session, and obviously got a lot of engagement. Thank so thank you for that. Okay. I've been asked to invite you to leave if you'd like to go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> right, great stuff. Um, item 11 is um, forward plan, which I think everybody has seen. Are there any items for inclusion in the forward plan? I couldn't see anything obvious. No? Okay. Um, Item 12 is working group updates. Now, I didn't understand this last time I was on, and I don't really understand it now. Yeah. That would explain part of it, wouldn't it? Uh, I suppose, do you feel at the moment? Does anybody feel that any of the items that we've considered today would benefit from the establishment of a working group for further consideration? I'm not getting overwhelming enthusiasm for that as an idea. Um, Councillor Daniels. Ah, Councillor Daniels. Sort of linked to that, Chair. Are there any previous working groups which perhaps yeah. members who were here in the past are aware of and could inform us of the work? Do they feel that was completed or would it be prudent to continue with that project? There were two that I was aware of and Councillor Maycock may um, update me on this. I've got attainment and skills and migrant travelling communities. So the, 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 the migrant travelling communities was uh, going to be a cross uh, scrutiny working group with uh, ISAG, um, but that was working towards the new formation of the plan uh, with the council and uh, the police, which had been formulated and, and passed down already. So I didn't... Uh, the, uh, team prior didn't, didn't feel he needed any more sc scope on that one. Uh, the, the, the attainment, the attainment one was a uh, councillor Kingston, uh, and I, I think that'd be a, te a teacher, a teacher one. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to liaise with uh, councillor Kingston on that to see where they got and any steps going forward. It, it feels instinctively that there's room for it, doesn't there? Because it is linked to well-being very closely. Um, are there any other areas that might benefit? I mean, for me, it's about there are things about cost of living and food security and all of those things that might benefit. But I'll explore that with the other scrutiny chairs in due course. Okay, um, we got the health and well-being scrutiny work plan. It's about reviewing the items on there. Sort of 
Yeah. Yeah. There's no link. There's no link to this plan. Can we come back to the next meeting with it? Yeah, I have got some copies, and yeah, the, I'm be honest. I believe it, I didn't link it because it hasn't changed, and I think it kind of needs yeah. overhauling, really, because it's got so much old information on. So that's maybe, maybe. So can we have that as a that. major item next time about yeah. the scrutiny work plan yeah. to review that, rather than trying to do it now when people haven't seen it? Okay. Um, Item 14 is exclusions of the press and public. I've got to read out this statement for the next half an hour, so <laughs> just talk amongst yourselves. That in accordance with the provision of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meetings and access to information, England Regulations 2012, and Section 100A, brackets 4, of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during considerations of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraphs 3 uh, of part 1 of schedule 12a to the act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. So thank you, every, members of the public, for your attendance. Um, I understand I need to get a mover for that and a seconder. Councillor Clements moves, Councillor Maycock seconds. All those in favour? Thank you very much. So thank you to the members of the public. Thank you for coming.